All right. Sorry for the slight technical difficulty. Yes. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hope you all enjoyed the light show that we had. Uh, uh, my name is Eric Sherman. I work with the city of Austin, uh, Texas. And this is, uh, I am Brian Smith. I also work as a software developer at the Office of Design and Delivery for the city of Austin. Um, he, him, him. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so our presentation is about creating a novel, novel interface for content authors. authors. Uh, we, have we have used Wagtail and, and made, made some, some modifications, modifications to have it, have it fit, fit the, 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 the ways, ways that, that our designers, designers in UX and UI, UI were hoping, hoping to, to allow the authors to work within, within creating, creating content. content. Yeah, so first yeah, so we'll first like we'll briefly, like, briefly introduce, introduce ourselves as well, yourself, and also, also let you know that, that we, uh, uh, just like Wagtail, like like our mascot is also a bird. Also a bird. Uh, this is the uh, love chicken. Uh, uh, it represents uh, our wholesome uh, collective nature uh, at the Office of Design and Delivery, where we work, um, which is a relatively new department. I, I myself started in January, but I believe the department itself was formed, what, like three years ago? Yeah, yeah. it started out you were there. a fellowship program and morphed into a department. So, so we've had some iteration. Yeah, and, yeah. and the main and project, the main that, project we that we are working on right now is a redesign of the city's website, website which is currently in alpha, and, and everything, everything we're sharing today is in alpha. alpha. So, so uh, with, that uh, with that context, context understood, understood uh, it's, it's really pretty, pretty, pretty early, early stage, stage stuff. stuff but, but like we'll talk, talk about, about well, Wagtail, Wagtail along with other stuff helps us really get a head start on what we're trying to do. And a lot of what we distinguish the way that our office works is we're very resident centric. So we spent a lot of work on our resident facing site and making sure that it's easy to use. Um, I don't know uh, the general consensus in the room as far as most government websites, at least US government websites that you go to tend to not be you know, you know, what was it Tom said about like the, the least worst, worst uh, yeah, sort of experience? We're definitely trying to do best in class for residents as well. And then uh, our, focus our focus as developers, developers is, uh, you know, we work with a relatively small team of uh, content strategists, UX people, service designers, and uh, we really see our role as supporting them and supporting residents. So we like to see them smile. We like to help them. We like to give them things that uh, make it easy to do what they do. And uh, um, that's uh, kind of our MO. Um, and so for this talk, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our early, early research, how we chose Wagtail, some early uh, modifications or enhancements that we made. And then we'll talk about where we're at presently and then talk a little bit about stuff we might do in the future, which I think uh, some synergy with what Tom was mentioning as well as uh, things that we've been thinking. So we're very excited to be here and, and have those conversations. Um, but first, first, let's talk, let's talk about, the about the past. I think Brian's Brian probably best to talk about this since he was actually there, there. Uh, uh, such a, so, so many so years ago, ago, 2017. Take us there. Take us there. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> when we, we started the, what is now referred to internally as the Alpha Project, um, just redesigning the site, it, we realized that there's a lot going on. We've got over a thousand pages on the current austintexas.gov site, most of which are never accessed. So it really became a, well, let's do a content audit, understand how we can best communicate with residents, and then once we understand and what we're trying to communicate best with residents, um, how can we build tools that actually support content authors in creating content that residents actually want and actually can use. And then that started before we even started talking about this from a technical standpoint. This was a, what would this look like from a content model standpoint? What, what, uh, what, what would this what look, look like, like from a authoring a interface standpoint, standpoint? And what would this what would look this like from a, a how is this how presented is both in mobile, mobile desktop, desktop, any, any other, other types, types of views that we want? Are we going to be able to print flyers? You know, what are all the ways in which we're trying to communicate with residents? What is our, what, what content do we have? How do we need to get that out? And at the same time, there was a pressure put on us to pick a CMS. Because, because Drupal, Drupal 7, 7 wasn't, wasn't good, good enough. enough, we need a new CMS, CMS that's magically, magically going to fix the thousand pages, pages that we have. have. Just pick a CMS. CMS. Um, um, so, so while we were going through this big, big let's rethink, let's rethink what, we're what we're doing with the city site and come up with a strategic plan to make this work, we had to pick something and get rolling. And 
we started, we started making decisions making based, decisions on, based both on both the skill sets of our team. Of our we team. were more comfortable, we were working, more comfortable within working within a, a Django environment Django and environment Python than we, Python we were trying to dive into PHP in 2017. 2017. And, um, and also, also the also ways that ways we wanted to build wanted things. To build uh, we, uh, were we were very much very thinking, much let's go as decoupled as possible. possible. Let's try to have a, a sense we're, we're making this making decision this early on. Let's on. go with a headless let's approach. approach. Let's have an API-driven, API resident-facing resident site. site. So that way that we way can be responsive. be responsive. If we need if stuff to go into an app, we can do that. And then let's just make sure that we have an authoring interface that works. Yeah, so I guess the spoiler there is we did choose Wagtail to do those things. Uh, and wanted to uh, shout out and thank like uh, CFTD. Um, we also spoke with the NHS more recently, but we did, uh, it was before my time, but lots of extensive note taking on our different options. And Wagtail definitely came out ahead for all the different reasons that Brian mentioned. Um, and like Brian also mentioned, we did do uh, a couple little uh, enhancements uh, outside of the box Wagtail. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't by default, by default serve headless, headless uh, but uh, it was relatively uh, easy to make that happen. Uh, uh, we, also we also chose, chose to, to uh, expose uh, the GraphQL endpoint, endpoint uh, uh, so our front-end so development was able to be the majority of what we focused on, and there wasn't as much diving back and forth. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, Brian, I think you can talk about, this is like an early example of uh, something that we did as, a, as an interface to create new pages that's uh, not a not default a uh, Wagtail admin, admin thing, thing, but was something, something that, that uh, was requested by our, by our UXer. UXer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we had made, made some changes, changes to the way that creating, creating and editing and pages within, within the those default Wagtail interface, interface works. works. And, one and one of the things, things that we wanted to do was have guided page, page creation. creation. Um, so, so this, this is, is kind of a scaled back version of what we originally had, had which, was, which was, okay, okay for all, all of these required fields, fields such as we have we a have poly hierarchy, hierarchy. So, so if this belongs, this belongs to multiple different, different topics, topics, then, then this, page, this page, you would you say, say, all right, this all right, is the this title of the page. page, these are the topics that I want it to belong to, this is a department it could be associated with, and then you hit create and you have that page, and those aren't things, things that, that just show, show up, up as a, hey, this is a required field, field. You, can't you can't save this save yet. yet. It's, it's already, already there, there because it's been a guided process there. there. Um, and that's and one that's of one the of things, things that, that was asked for as far as, as, far as, 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 as a UX improvement. Um, um, we, we ended up building this by, it's actually a React component, and we have Webpack hooked up. So it's adding a Webpack bundle to the admin template in there to allow us to do this creation. And so that ended up being a pretty cool improvement. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there's other like enhancements and tweaks that we've done over time that we'll talk about next. Um, but, but overall, overall like the, the approach, approach was sort of, sort of uh, this is my this favorite slide, slide, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so overall, it was like pretty easy to get set up with Wagtail and also deploy it the way we wanted to. Uh, we use Docker for our deployments and you know have different staging and production environments and setting it up for headless is pretty straightforward. Serving GraphQL endpoints is pretty straightforward. Um, does everything work? Like most of the time, yeah, it works pretty well. I mean, uh, and you know when it when it doesn't work, uh, you know we've been able to engage with each other and engage with the community and. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes there's pushback, there's pushback like, like, we'll like we'll talk about, about next. next. I mean, there's, there's definitely, definitely like limits uh, to uh, the to sort of hacking that we've done to try to, to try give people what they want, want uh, which is part of the reason why we're here, because uh, so we'd, we'd like to collaborate, collaborate a little bit more directly. But, directly, but overall, uh, pretty, pretty satisfied, satisfied and happy using the system. system. Every time for myself as a full stack developer, I can move away from working in React and go back to doing some stuff in Python for a couple of days. I'm like, this is nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, now we'll so talk about more like, like uh, present, present present day, day uh, where we're at currently. Uh, um, uh, you might have noticed already, uh, there's, some there's some customizations that we made through the admin, admin interface. interface. Um, uh, I'll, point I'll point out like, like the, the biggest, biggest ones, one, which is, uh, uh, do we have a pointer? I'll just point. I'll point. See here. Uh, you can um, see that there's, there's a, 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 a sort of a sidebar preview that we've made in an iframe. And 
the, the idea, idea here, here there's two, two main, main things, that things that we wanted to support. support. One, One is uh, uh, we have a style guide that our content team is making, which is supposed to guide content creators. Because right now we right have now four, we have four or five authors, 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 but eventually it's going to be people throughout, throughout the city. And we want to be able to sort of dynamically link those authors to the information of not just, you know, the admin interface does provide ability to put some help text, but we want to be able to say, like, well, well, how should how you should craft your craft title? Like, you know, you know some of that some is of that various and sundry things, things like, uh, you know, like you, you know, don't, don't actually put, need to put the name of your department, department and the title of your page. page just so you know, you know, kind of stuff like that. that. Um, but um, also about, about making the content accessible, accessible for each section. section. And so, so the idea is that you have a style guide tab that will have anchor links to like title and description, and there'll be like more detailed information for those authors and kind of side by side. And then there's a mobile preview which won't work on. This flat screenshot, um, um, but trust us, it works, works really, really great, great all the time. All the time. Never any problems. <laughs> um, um, and so that is that is a that is a preview build uh, in an iframe of the front end of the site. And the main focus there uh, is that we we found that um, there's a a lot of value to having the mobile preview because most of our residents are going to be accessing the city website from mobile, uh, from mobile rather. And it's uh, easier to have content writers sort of see how this is going to present on, on mobile uh, and show that that's a priority. It, it might uh, help influence like the verbosity of what they write and make sure that it'll actually just, you know, look good on mobile from, from the get-go. So that's kind of a, an important focus, I think, for us and I think might be for, for others as well. Um, so that's a pretty major uh, departure, I think a, a pretty useful feature, a, a cool idea, if I do say so myself. Um, and uh, you'll notice other, other things. Uh, this uh, this screenshot's a little bit out of date, but we, uh, for a while, we've had a, a, a smaller, more custom menu, mainly because we just didn't want to expose all this extra functionality that we know is there to people that don't need to see it just yet. Um, we also moved the account login to the upper right-hand corner. Uh, oh, oh, the computer just went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> is it back? It's back. It's back. Okay, we're back. Um, and we went to and the next slide, slide too. How convenient. <laughs> So, um, so um, we're, the account login, like I mentioned, is in the upper right hand corner. Uh, that's, where that's where it is, it is in, in like 90% like of, of web apps, apps or, or mobile websites, websites, websites that you might that use. So, we were asked to move it to where people would expect, expect to see it. To see it. Uh, uh, and and um, we, also, we also, by default, by default as it stands, when you log in, you go to like the page explorer page. And again, that's just we didn't want one more place for someone to have to go in order to then see content that's related to them. And also, like I mentioned, this is all in alpha, so we're basically sort of trying these, trying things, these out. things out. Might change might in the change future, future. Yeah, that's how yeah, it is how it currently. Is currently. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, there are definitely there ways that we've already, already planned on improving both, both the editing, the editing interface, interface, having it having so our mobile, mobile preview is something that's, that's actually that's live, live updating, updating instead of needing to save a draft and then seeing it previewed again, as well as switching from what is now just a modified version of the home page, and these are all the children there, to using, to using an updated, an updated search, search page, page where we can actually, can actually sort, sort and filter based, based on based which on author which has author logged in, has logged because, in because, because as we move as from, from you know tens, you know, of, pages tens of pages to pages thousands of thousands, hopefully, hopefully hundreds, of hundreds of pages instead pages of thousands, thousands uh, we uh, will have a lot of content uh, authors that want to see different things and their dashboard of I just logged in, what are the pages that I care about, and how do I quickly see a list of those. Of those um, um, using the search, using page, the search will page be a will good be a direction good for that. Yeah, and also, yeah, and um, also um, we also, we also as you can see, can there's, see a, there's like a, we created the ability to publish ability a page directly from this page, page listing, uh, uh, which was relatively easy relatively to do. Easy uh, to do uh, uh, and um, I'll also just go back real quick to say, like most of you are probably familiar with the vanilla admin. We we uh, removed and cleaned up a lot of the styling just because it started to feel a little cluttered. Uh, but so um, some of the like pink dashes across the admin aren't there, uh, and there's just more of a simple uh, division between sections, um, which has worked pretty well, more or less. Sometimes there's there's things that we get asked to do, like uh, what, like we wanted to move the, the health text for the field to, to just be like above the box instead of below it, and that was like much harder for me to figure out than I might have liked, uh, but we figured out a way to make it work with the tools that were available. 
Um, so we already talked about so that, talked account about settings, that. Placement. settings placement. Um, um, oh, this is a slide oh, about these learns. Okay, okay, so I didn't okay, finish so filling this out. out. Um, <laughs> 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 so, uh, anyways, um, so I think most of this is that we'll just, we're running out of time. We'll move on to the future because I think actually most of the pain points are discussed there. Um, so the future. The future. Uh, to, the uh, to the future. So, um, so um, yeah, I think yeah, some of the pain points we already talked about, some of you might be familiar with yourselves if you tried to play with the admin. Uh, it works really, it works really well, well when it's used as it's designed, designed to be used. To uh, when you start when trying you start to move trying stuff, to stuff around, around, it gets a little bit, a little bit trickier, trickier, like moving the account moving into the, the upper right-hand right corner. Right -hand corner. corner. Uh, uh, not quite as straightforward as you might like. It's not necessarily as componentized as would be ideal. Avoiding page reloads is another thing that our UX people have, have constantly asked us to do something about, which is you know something that we would like to be able to do. And of course, we could. We just haven't put the development effort into making it, whether it be AJAX templates or whatever. That there's a couple different options there. Um, and the also what has come up to is doing more flexible messaging on the UI. You know, right now the admin uses uh, uh, Django messages, Django messages and, and there's some ability some to ability craft to what the craft message what actually, actually says, says, but a lot of, it, a is lot of it is essentially, is essentially baked into the Wagtail admin. admin. And so, and so controlling, controlling when those messages, when those messages pop, pop up and also what they say, say uh, in a conditional, in a conditional way, way. Uh, uh, at least it wasn't initially, it wasn't initially immediately apparent to me how I might do that. Some of that, some of that, some of these things kind of cascade into each other. Like, for example, we added some custom buttons to like share a draft or share a preview. If you share a draft, it just copies the preview link to your clipboard so you can share it with someone. But in order to do that, you have to save the page. And when you save the page, the entire admin reloads. And that happens when you click the preview as well. And uh, it's just not the uh, best, the best it's kind yeah, of a jarring, jarring UX, UX experience. experience. And then, and then once, once you do you that, that, it triggers the Django message, which pops message down and says, your page, page has been updated, updated which, is, which is when we also have a pop-up that, that says, this has been copied to your clipboard. It's just kind of like the entire page reloads and then there's messages everywhere. And so it just, it starts to be cascading a little bit. And I think that is that was one of the reasons why I started poking around, found the Wagtail Slack. Started seeing that there's some refactoring of the admin going on, and then was like, okay, well, let's see, like, if we can, you know, see what else is going on, what other people have in mind. I mean, we can do this in a cleaner way and be more uh, collaborative. Uh, when you get something from a UX designer, it says, hey, I want to have a button where you have where you share a preview link, and then you get a little thing that pops up and says, preview link copied to clipboard, and then you can go ahead and send that, and it doesn't have any page reloads, and it's just a clean little pop-up that says that, and then you go to implement that, and it's like, well, it needs to be the latest version, because if we type something in there, it needs to be saved, it definitely adds some layers. Yeah, for sure. Another thing that, that came, came up, up uh, that, that I'm curious to see if, to see if uh, the, there, there were other, other uh, noticed by other people by is kind of tied to that. Um, um, but there's a lot of uh, uh, the the whole revision uh, and page model with Wagtail is great. Um, uh, one of the one things, things is uh, uh, we would often we would notice often that our that authors would end up having to essentially save revisions, revisions that don't really have any differences between them. Between them. For, example, for example, like we've just like been talking about, about, if you want to like share, share a preview, preview well, it saves, well, it saves a revision. A lot of times, lot of times there isn't there actually any difference, difference between, between the new revision and the old revision, but it still had to be saved, so it's got to do that. Um, and so you end up with a lot of duplicate revisions, uh, or I guess what I would describe as duplicate revision. Um, and uh, that's not the that's best not the user best experience for content, content authors. authors. Like the revisions like, interface, interface is nice. It's nice, nice to like, see the list of revisions, revisions, but then when, but then when you go to compare and find out that, find out that there aren't actually, there aren't a, lot actually a lot of differences between most of them, them it starts, it starts to, to, to be disappointing, disappointing uh, for uh, uh, someone who's uh, like mainly an author and not really necessarily going to grasp the like technical difference of like, well, this is a new revision, right? You know, like we might all understand that, but from a content author, like this isn't a new revision. It's not, you know, and. So we were asked if we could prevent all these duplicate revisions and drafts, and I have a couple ideas for doing that, but like not surprisingly, most of that uh, starts to heavily dip into like core Wagtail uh, territory. You know, there is the feature that exists to be able to compare revisions. It would be great to be able to maybe call that function elsewhere and either prevent a duplicate revision or maybe be able to like filter out the ones that don't have a lot of differences. Um, definitely something happy to talk about. Um, 
and, uh, and uh, we've also we've talked, talked about, about uh, uh, having additional having custom additional statuses, statuses of pages, pages like archive is a big one, one where, where like like we have, have the request early on, on to remove the ability, ability for people to be able to delete pages, pages. Um, but, um, there but there still uh, is uh, some is ability, some ability requested, requested to, to be able to have the status of the page, of perhaps, page be perhaps be archived so that, so that uh, uh, you know, just you know, this, this probably gets, probably more, gets more into the nitty gritty of how like city government works and like editorial and and not just like getting rid of something, but having it around forever because, you know, I don't know exactly why, but um, that's that's something that we're interested in exploring as well. Um, I don't know that might be something I could speak to a little bit more. But yeah, yeah, basically, instead of actually having it be deleted, we want it to be unpublished, but also hard to find. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so it was interesting to hear uh, Tom. You you speak about the sort of fork in the road because that's something we discuss internally a lot too. Uh, as we're faced with like feature requests. And we have to, we prioritize, have to prioritize them, decide what decide we're going to work on now, what we're going to do later, how we're going to approach it. It, um, there, it, it, it is often popped often up in our mind of like, like well, well, sometimes we're at cross purposes if we're trying to like design and, and test like the like, like, like hypothetical ideal, ideal author, author interface. interface. It's a lot easier to do that if you're not also coupled with an existing author interface that already has opinions about how to operate. And so like Brian also mentioned earlier, mobile previews, Previews, previews of builds, of builds in, general. in general works pretty, works pretty good, good. Uh, um, but, it but it would be nice to be able to just like import our React components from the front end there and just have it be like a live preview, preview without actually having to reference, reference, reference a different website. website. Um, um, and that's, and that's uh, so that's so something we thought about. We've also thought about the fact of like, okay, well, what if what if there was just like an admin API similar to how there's already an API exposed to be able to do pages? Like, well, what about Creating pages, pages, editing, editing updating. updating. Um, um, definitely, definitely, I guess, I guess seems, like seems like two like different two paths, paths to go. To go. I think, I think, you know, you know personally, personally, it, it, it might be possible, might be possible to, to do both to an extent. extent. I, feel like I feel like having the option, the option of, of an existing, existing admin interface, interface is great. great. The ability to maybe play around with custom views along with that, or perhaps a more limited subset, would be cool too. I think I'm. We're definitely open to both options, whatever makes the most sense, for sure. Um, for sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, uh, we yeah. also just want to say uh, thanks, to say thanks. Partner. partner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, really, like uh, we said before, like, like, like um, uh, using Wagtail has Wagtail been a great has success, success for us. Success the, majority, the majority, to be frank, the majority of the time that, the time that we've, we've spent, spent on development, development has been has on the front end facing resident site, which this talk is not about at all. On that site, by the way, like we mentioned, is headless and it's a static generated site. We're going to be doing a workshop tomorrow about those two things. Uh, so feel free to come to that. Um, but we really have been able to like focus on serving residents first because we know that we have this admin interface combined with like page models that is like been good enough and great to be able to make changes to like quickly so that we could go back to pivoting and focusing on a resident facing site. Uh, and we're excited to now be now able to spend more spend time and effort and energy, energy on the actual author experience, author experience side of it. Side of it. Um, um, and, and knowing, knowing that there's that a great community out here that's, that's also interested in those things, things is really empowering. Power, and we're a very small team with limited resources. resources. Uh, uh, we're, not we're not very, very uh, established, established inside, inside of the city. The city. And so we have so to we do have a lot with a little. And so being able to utilize like these open source communities is like 110% critical for us to be able to actually like deliver these things that might Otherwise, Otherwise cost the city, city like, like potentially, potentially like hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Of dollars. Like, I don't even know how much they've spent on the Drupal 8 upgrade. upgrade. Uh, to, uh, make to make that happen, that happen. And, and, and meanwhile we've been we able to like deliver this, this you know <laughs> practically with nothing uh, uh, and so, so that, that wouldn't be possible without all of the collaboration, collaboration with all of y'all so, so definitely, definitely deserve a shout, shout out to you, to you. you wonderful, wonderful people, people. Um, um, and I think I that's think like yeah that's yeah, pretty much it I know we're I'm trying I'm not sure how we are for time but I think we're I think we got time for questions if anybody has any if you're not, no, I just I want to re-plug re the, we're going, we're going to be doing the workshop, workshop day workshop tomorrow, tomorrow with, with, if you're, if you're interested, interested in GraphQL or static site generation, static site generation or just, just anything, anything headless. headless. We have experience, we have experience with, that. with that. I'd love to work with you and, and uh, uh, see, see what, what other people other are trying, people to, are trying do to do in that space, space as well. As well. Okay. Okay.